this is exactly what I needed. Check out the view out of my door in the van. Step outside to this. It's like you're on top of the world. This is so amazing. And to think I just booked this spot a week ago. I was able to get this awesome spot just a week ago. And in California, it's hard to get places. So this is a really, really, really amazing. Got my coffee cup to go and I'm gonna hit the road tonight. This doesn't she look so cute on top of the world? Yeah, I can't get over the weather, the view, the whole nine yards. So pretty and a nice breeze can't beat that fire pit picnic table and the view keeps going the view keeps going where the campground goes to different parts. I'm in the shop Chaparral campground and then there's the Grand Prix campground and Can Can Am Circle campground. Anyway, so there's multiple areas of this park. Walk up the road. You will see that there's a campsite map right here. Look at those views. Look over there. Look at those sites. They're on an edge too, and you might hear some cars racing in the background. It's because we are at the Laguna Seca Raceway. So, to me it's a perk. You can hear the cars, watch the cars. Free entertainment. Trash cans right here, even doggy bags. There are trash cans everywhere. There's another, on the other side of my RV is more trash cans. So up, down that. I mean, all these sites on this back, or almost every site has views. It's crazy. Because if you look from this side, look at those mountains over there. Let's turn, see if I get past these people's car. Look at, look at, the, look at that. Look at that view, look at those mountains. Simply amazing. Have a glass of wine in the evening. It's so relaxing here. It's one of my all-time favorite campgrounds. So we've already we've just walked a little ways and we're already to the bathrooms, which have showers. And they're wheelchair accessible. In fact, we found a handicap friendly site that Derek and I are gonna book next time we come together. Next time when his legs well enough for him to get back in the van traveling we just don't want the leg to get any to get worse or anything we want the leg to heal properly so hopping in and out of a van is not the easiest so here look 48 look at this wheelchair accessible fenced in sight how cool is this let me try to back up so you can get a good view of the whole site Okay, backed up to the bathrooms, but here. It's like a little fenced-in handicapped site. And let me turn around. You can see the handicapped parking right here for the bathrooms. Really quick, since we're over here, there is handicapped bathrooms here. But there's a whole big restroom over there around the corner, and we'll go check that out in a minute. But for now, I'm going to show you the campsite that we're going to start booking. Last time we were here, this one wasn't available, so we didn't get to stay in this one. But look, pull in the van. There's your hookups. Fire pit. All flat. And no, it's not all the way cemented. There is some dirt, but that's okay. And then on this end of the table, notice it's a roll under table. 
So that's pretty cool. Derek can sit here and eat, roll under. But check out these trees. This is like a highlight of this site because it is, it is shady. Derek needs shade. But dang, check out this amazing tree. This is like the, a huge tree. And it goes out. Now imagine kids and grandkids climbing this tree. Wow. So it may not have as good as good as view on this site, but it's shady. Okay, let's go over to the bathrooms. Oh, and let's check out if we can see the cars racing from here. Now, this site has little plants. Oh, we're close. We're close to the raceway. But here's a bench, and here's... And the women's restroom. Really big, lots of stalls. You can even plug something in to get ready, do your hair. Lots of bathrooms. The last one is handicap accessible. Really wide. And then there's showers. And again, the last one is bigger with a bench. This, I'm gonna say the little library. You can get books in here if you want something to read. This is super cute. Now I know where I can bring some books. Okay, coming out of the bathroom. I'm going to walk across this site real quick so I can see. Where the raceway is. Okay, so there's the ticket office to come in. And the raceway's just over there. So we'll check it out in a minute. Now this area right next to the bathrooms that we came out of. Check it out. Wouldn't this be great for a bunch of families like a party? There's like a bunch of sites right here under these trees in one big area. Oh, beautiful, shady. So maybe we'll have to have a meet up here. This would be amazing. Have a get together at least, because I see it. We could do at least one, two, three, four, five, six seven people in this little area, or seven rigs in this little area. Now let's go see some racing. up there on top of the hill but look at this one right here number 43 the hookups are way out here though but check it out fire pit table 
And then you're way on top of the world with the beautiful view and a nice tree. Oh, your rig goes over here, so it's like a van parking. And then this is where your site is. My site, number nine, this is my view. Nobody's next to me, as you can see on this side. Here's the van on top of the world. My little chair and table set up, fire pit. <laughs> fire logs holding down the mat from the breeze. I didn't want to permanently secure it at the time. And then let's walk around the van. This is one of my hacks. I have magnets. You can dry things outside like that on the side of the van. That's me drying a towel. Anyway, look at this. Now, there is a site between me and that other RV, but it's empty, so that's been really nice. But wow, oh wow. So, so, so amazing. And I can sit out here, do some editing, a little bit of editing, do some work, and enjoy this view right here. Yep. This is the best life. And I can rest and recuperate from getting my Botox shots. And in the nice cooler weather. So this is what exactly what I needed to get back to my full health. This view. And for those of you that are new to the channel and don't know, I suffer from something called cervical dystonia, and it's a neurological disorder where the brain sends signals to your muscles to contract involuntarily. It's a super painful disorder, and I need Botox therapy every three months along with um, in-between occipital nerve blocks and checkups with my neurologist, so it's a constant every six-week um, program for life and so it it causes the the pain can be very debilitating and when you're in constant pain you know you're not performing at your best so I'm kind of doing a little reset out here my injections were the Friday before this last week so a week maybe 10 days ago so the Botox is starting to kick in and I'm starting to feel better kind of doing a reset here um, so you can see my head's a little straighter. You can see the muscle still contracting, so it's not all the way kicked in because you can see this collarbone very extended compared to the other one. But I'm getting much more comfortable and my head is straighter and um, things are settling down. But I do have this awesome chair to sit back in and it takes pressure off the muscles and you can see them immediately relax. So I can sit here, I can lounge in the bed, um, do things at my own pace, enjoy the cooler weather. Um, it's definitely what I needed to do. So let me explain a little bit about Botox. Um, people hear about it for wrinkles. Well, I obviously don't get it for, for wrinkles because <laughs> see, I can still, I still have plenty of wrinkles. No, I get it for, um, to paralyze the muscles. Um, so that they cannot contract involuntarily. So um, my neurologist injects it from my head back here, these ner above these nerves, because I get my headaches severe. Um, I get occipital neuralgia, so the very bad um, nerve pain back here. And then he injects it all the way down to my mid back um, to those muscles. So there's like 20 injections in all to, because I have a very severe, I have a severe form and um, so if I'm at my maximum dose now, so if things keep progressing, then um, we'll have to talk about some other surgical options. But for now, I'm not thinking about that. I'm just doing what I gotta do. And so, um, living the van life in my little van, Betty White, is very therapeutic for me. 
Here is my cooking setup for this trip. The trash can's underneath there. That's the lift up side table. I do have a really portable induction burner for when we're on plug-ins. And a cutting board over the sink. Right now there's dishes, of course. And yay, running water. And the great tank's 12 gallons, so we've got a ways to go still. And then, besides this area, and there's my hanging fruit bowl, which I love. Besides this area, we have our refrigerator here. And you can also put a cutting board on top there. It came with a cutting board. We're going to do a review of this refrigerator later, so keep that in mind. And I have this pop-up side table, and this is where the coffee action happens. This is my boiling pot, boiling my water pot to make soup, boil water, and then I do the coffee action right here. So these are my cooking areas in the van. And check out that fresh basil. It's been on the whole trip with me. I love fresh basil. I even put it in my iced tea. Look, fresh, yum. It's just so good. I love fresh. Who says you cannot have fresh herbs while you're living in a van? Hmm. Anyway, how I do it, oh, I'll show you a hack later, but I can show you quickly. See, it's in its little fresh pot, and then it's in a water cup that's Velcroed to the countertop. And all you do is add water to the cup, and it loves it. It's thriving big time. But normally, if I'm not on plugins, I can't use the induction burger. Bur we can't, I cannot use the induction burner when I'm not on, on plug-ins because I do not have a big enough battery and inverter. So I use propane cooking when I'm not on hookups. But I do carry this. It's very flat and easy to store for, for hookups only. Because I'm on hookups, I have the holy grail. I have an AC. So if I want to run the AC, let's turn the baby on. It hasn't been around for a while. Let's see. That's optional. Let's see. Oh, that is some AC. So, if you get really hot out there and you, um, like you're camping and it's really hot, you could always go to an RV park where there's hookups for the night and get cooled down. So, that's really nice. But no, I cannot run the AC when I'm boondocking unless I have a generator. Step into my office. This is how, where the magic happens. <laughs> and I'm talking about editing. <laughs> Other magic too, but this isn't about my office space right now. Isn't it cool? I have the back support I need. I have the tray here. I have my computer. Yep, office space. Welcome to the lazy man's office. <laughs> Oh crapola, it's raining. I gotta get my chair, I gotta get my chair. Get my chair out of the rain, my lovely chair. Quick rain, so I got my chair all folded up. It's right there against the cab. So it's not all wet, but it's already stopped. So we'll see if it starts up again. It's a little humid right now. And remember, we always say nature is the best medicine, and it, literally that is our motto, and we stand by it, because I can tell you, just from my own experience with all my medical conditions, that getting out here always helps me, and it helps me improve. So, um, I'm just doing what I need to do for my health and my body and mental status, the whole nine yards. And Derek likes to come out too, as you know, from the footage you've seen, but because he did break his femur and he's not completely healed and until his doctor says he is, he doesn't want to be jumping, you know, going in and out of the van and all over that requires more um, exertion and stress on his fractured leg. Um, and the van is very small inside so when he when we did go to Oregon it was it was stressful because it's hard for him to even turn around in the van imagine having your legs straight out 
and trying to get in and out of bed and everything. And he did it. He's a trooper, but it wasn't easy. So both of us feel like it's better for him to let the leg heal before he does any more big adventures. But he does want to be out here. Believe me, he loves it. I pretty much need to take the trash out before I go. Always dump the trash. And then this table needs to go down. Yep. That goes down. I have to dump the urine. So I'll dump it in the bathroom so it's empty. But it looks like when I'm ready when we're ready to roll pretty much. So if I have to put the basket down here, this is See, that one's, st that will not go anywhere. And then I put this down in here, with the, along with the soap. And anything else that's going to wiggle goes in there, like this cup. Pretty much everything has to go in the sink, but we're, other than that, we're ready to roll. So see ya next trip. Bye, and thanks for watching. We love you guys.